Welcome back to the next part of my trying to fit this Weber DGV carburetor. So let's try this again, shall we? These are the original manifold studs, which I had trouble ordering because one of the sides is a uh, M8 fine thread, but the side here which goes into the inlet manifold is actually just an M8 with a standard thread. Goes in about this far, but of course it's slightly too long. My new carb setup. Uh, I did actually try cutting down one of the original ones, uh, but as you can see, the it, it doesn't leave much of the thread for the carburetor to clamp down on. I've instead ordered these M8 uh, standard threaded bar, and it's got a useful little Allen hex head thing on it to make it easier to do up. I've also got a set of these copper locking um, nuts with a like a built-in washer on the end of it, uh, but it's uh, going to be a lot easier to fit than having to use that double nut method that I showed you in an earlier video to this. You may remember in the earlier video I had a right job getting this gasket on and of course it's just dropped straight in place here, lovely and flat. With the carb on you can see that the top of the thread here is just enough protruding for the nut to fit on here uh, so I've got enough clearance to be able to drop the nut on and uh, get a spanner onto, onto each of the four corners uh, so hopefully this will be easier to do it than it was before. I may have just cut it a little bit too close with the threaded bar here as this nut is actually touching the base of the uh, carb but the locking tabs on the top aren't quite digging into the thread just yet so I have ordered a 5mm longer set so I've put these in. This must be a copper alloy. So this is the 5mm longer threaded bars fitted and uh, might as well do it properly for the time lucky and all that. We've got a bit more of a gap to play with now, so I can tighten these nuts down uh, a bit more confidently, knowing that the like, locking tabs are actually going to dig into the thread. There's even enough room under here if, if I wanted to add an extra washer or spring washer, which I have ordered, but apparently you won't need them with these um, these copper nuts. Looking at this, I think this is about 5mm, so I, I may have got away with those shorter ones, um, but I think it was bit more sensible putting the slightly longer ones on just to make sure. The choke and throttle linkage is reconnected so there's a fuel line and the vacuum advance. I just need to set the idle on this and then we can try and start. So to set the mechanical idle speed uh, this is basically where the throttle comes to a stop. Uh, you back the screw out just so it's uh, there's a gap uh, and then you move it back in where it's touching and then you just turn it say a quarter of a turn this will just give you a, a good starting point to start the car on. The other idle screw on this carburetor is the idle mixture screw here. What you do is you just screw it all, all the way in and then basically turn it half a turn back out to give you that, that good starting point. So let's see if she will start I'll go for sort of three quarter choke, a bit of throttle as well. Annoyingly, this is how it was running before. It definitely doesn't like a lot of choke, but uh, it is a warm day, although it hasn't actually moved for ages. Today's video is brought to you by Lens Store. If like me you're as blind as a bat but don't want to look like some specky nerd, you may already wear or wish to try contact lenses. 
Then the store offer only the best quality brands including AccuView Oasis and Focus Dailies for some of the most competitive prices around. Order before 11pm and Leinster will have it with you the next day. Orders can be made without any referral or copy of your prescription and by using my link in the description below you will get 10% off. Now back to the video. All I've done is turn the idle stop screw um, in a bit so it's revving high with no throttle and no choke and it's actually well it's running. Gradually back the idle speed off a bit, and then see uh, see if it idle reliably. Just want to check we definitely don't have any leaks, uh, vacuum leaks in the new gasket. That's a good sign, the car cleaner's not having any effect on the engine speed, so uh, it's indicative of no leak, thankfully. Now the engine's up to temperature, I'm going to back the idle mixture screw out a, a full turn, so it's actually a turn and a half out. This should give me somewhere close to lean best idle. Any more than that means that the idle jet is actually slightly too big. really not liking that choke, even though it is warm, the, uh, it should just raise the idle a little bit, not actually make it bog down like it's doing. It's at normal operating temperature, so if it was running lean it'd be overheating, uh, if it was running too lean it'd be overheating. I think the next thing to do is just put it under a bit of load, move it backwards and forwards. Even though I left the handbrake off and just used a wheel chock, the uh, brakes are binding a little bit. Uh, but at least the car's not stalling when I'm uh, slowly pulling away. So let's just switch the engine off for a few minutes and try again. So will it hot start okay? So I'm a bit more confident in taking it for a spin around the block, uh, so join me in the next video, it's been a while but we'll take the Cavalier for a, a bit of a drive. Thanks for watching.